we're going to learn a little bit about how to make the most bougie coffee in the world. It's me, and that is the pour over. There's an art with this. But you can't have bougie coffee with coffee you get from like any old store, in my opinion. You want good quality coffee, and we're gonna start this video off. Road trip! Let's go. The things I do for this vlog. I'm just putting this out there that the Toyota Tacoma has the best seat warmers in the TRD Pro. Come on, tushy warmer. So it's a little bit sloppy out here driving. It's uh, about 34 degrees Fahrenheit. And um, for those not in the States, that's about a one degree Celsius. The roads are still wet, but the you can definitely tell it's, it's getting close. If this... Uh, temperature drops any more then maybe we'd get some different kind of precipitation like frozen rain uh, if you're not if you've never experienced frozen rain before it's like ice pellets dropping out of the sky and it can accumulate in the on the grass and it can kind of make it look like it's snowed but it's just solid ice and what it does is it ends up getting on top of the uh, telephone lines and on the trees weighting down limbs and it ends up taking down power lines and telephone lines and whatnot, basically causing havoc on the grid, so. Welcome to Harris Teeter. This is like the creme de la creme of uh, the grocery stores here in the Carolinas. Pretty nice. It's got all the gourmet stuff you could possibly want. If uh, you're familiar with Fresh Market, it's um, comparable, if not better than a Fresh Market. So that helps you out. Very expensive. I only come in here because of um, there's things in here that you can get that you just can't get else elsewhere, anywhere. So this is why I like Harris Teeter a lot because they've got if you're looking for your local coffees this is a great place to come. Uh, what I've been noticing over um, the short period of time I've been doing pour over coffees is that um, whole bean is best, local, I like dark roasts, um, rich coffees are perfect for a pour over, and um, I like supporting local, so the Charleston coffee roasters are great for that. Uh, Counterculture is also local here to the Carolinas, I love their Big Trouble, it brews up perfect. and. Um, Pure Intentions is another uh, company that I've used. Uh, they've got some of their stuff here too. So the one I've been drinking a lot of here lately is this organic Colombian. It's a whole bean. And I see that they've got some Charleston organic. It's a medium roast. I haven't tried that one yet. I'll do that. And I also really like their Sumatra. So I might get a bag of that too while I'm here, just so I don't have to come back. And um, I like uh, sugar and cream in my coffee. Turbinado is the way to go. And they've got store brand. Look, 
sugar in the raw is about 540 here 550 you can get their brand right now on sale for three dollars that's a great deal all right kids i think we're gonna head on home and go brew some coffee you're gonna need a kettle electric kettle and out of sheer accident i got this one it's got a nice little spout on it and what i like about the kasori is that you can turn it on and you can set it for different levels of temperature so coffee is supposed to be set at somewhere right around um, anywhere from 195 to 205 degrees uh, they say the sweet spot for coffee for a pour over is about 200. This thing sets it at about 205 out of uh, sheer limited experience. That's just fine. Hi, Steve. There's a dog down here, which you may or may not be able to see. And here's some other things you're going to need. Obviously, a coffee mug. This is my daily go-to. It's a Yeti. We have a hand ground a hand grinder for coffee for your beans. This is called uh, a Chemex. The Chemex is a style of coffee uh, brewer for pour over. Uh, you can brew it in many different ways with a really tall coffee filter that just kind of rests in the glass. The Kasori actually came with this metal filter. Uh, I like this uh, design because it really comes in handy just to make for easy cleanup as well as i don't know why but i'm also really nervous for some odd reason about having my coffee filter slip down i've watched a lot of videos since getting this thing and uh, they never seem to have that problem but for me eh, it seems to work out just fine and then like a coffee spoon to measure it out and then this is what we just picked up at the store this is the Charleston Organic. The whole deal about the pour over, why is it so much better? Because it's all about the measurements. For you and me who are probably just home brewers that haven't really gotten into the whole scale and weighting of every single ingredient, I'm just gonna kind of show you what works best for me uh, to get the most ideal coffee pour over. Okay, so we're going to get the bougie side of it without getting all the science side of it. Okay, I mean, you could measure each single grain if you wanted to have a scale. Um, so far, everything that everybody's been talking about um, is very doable. Okay, I mean, you're measuring out coffee beans by weight, typically in grams is what they talk about. Uh, just know that three tablespoons or coffee scoops. Uh, for this process that I'm going to show you today is roughly right around 16 uh, to 17 grams or so in weight. Um, but uh, yeah, so anyways. And then lastly, the biggest thing you have to know is how much water you're going to be pouring over your coffee. So it's a water to coffee ratio. Make sense? You with me so far? Not too bougie so far, right? This We're just you get the general hand of it. Now you could certainly use a lighter blend of coffee for your pour over and still have a great experience. Uh, what you're going to want to do for darker roast is typically grind finer coffee versus your French press which is almost as uh, coarse as coarse salt. That's the easiest way I could describe it uh, as I've been brewing and learning between moving from French press to pour over. Uh, so this is a hand grinder. The hand grinder consists of the reservoir where everything kind of shoots down into, okay? And now you can weight your coffee right in this on a scale if you want to see exactly how much coffee you're going to get and then grind it up. And this has um, got a setter on the bottom of it. So you can twist and turn this if you think you've got the coffee grind not, or not, fine enough you can adjust it here so i've been fiddling with this now for a few days and i think i've got a really good setting for me then you've got where you put your actual coffee into and obviously a silly handle 
if you want to have a really good workout <laughs> um, and make coffee, uh, this is a great means. Um, otherwise, you're going to be looking at electric coffee bean grinders. So I have mentioned this to a lot of different people. It's like they ask me, well, well, Joe, why are you grinding your coffee beans right when you go and you brew? And I've shown this on vlogs a bunch of different times. And the answer is, is the beans have like oil and moistures in them that are just kind of locked in when you first get your beans. And you're releasing all of those beautiful oils right on grind. So if you have ground your coffee for like two weeks or so, by the time you get to that two week mark, uh, you will probably have a completely different flavor on your coffee. Uh, if you even notice, you know, if you're using like a drip coffee machine, you're, you just really don't care. Matter of fact, when you go and you get your coffee beans at the store, it's a safe bet that the coffee, the grind, the ground coffee, if it's already comes pre-ground, it's already pretty much all stale and losing some of its stuff. You know what I mean? So if you're wanting the most perfect blend of coffee, use one of these. Now, is the Chemex in the pour over the most uh, environmentally friendly? Definitely not as much as using a French press or a mocha pot by any stretch of the imagination. Why? Is because this has some filter capabilities. Now, it does, this one did come with this uh, mesh strainer, uh, but out of experience, you want to have, with this kind of uh, uh, coffee filter or a drip coffee filter, you want to go ahead and use a, a little paper filter. So there is some ways to the environment that you want to consider uh, when you uh, start thinking about using a Chemex or pour over style coffee machine. For today, I'm going to basically use the Charleston Organic and I'm just going to put in three of these guys. So imperfect, I know. So if you're like uh, an Uber snob coming in um, to this video and you're like, oh, there's so many other ways, get yourself a scale. I definitely know that. Um, I'm just, I found what works best for me and uh, I've even tinkered with the physical amount that comes into these things. It's all about tinkering. It's all about time. It's all about the whole process, you know? So if, uh, another reason to geek out about coffee is taking the time and some even relate it to being very meditative. You know, you're pouring over your coffee, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Well, long story short is you're also getting kind of a workout too, if you choose to go hand grinder route. So, um, but you can also tinker with all of your ingredients to make it exactly right. So let's just say you find with this particular coffee, it's 19 grams in weight versus another blend that seems to be more like 17 grams of weight. That's the whole part of this, uh, this culture of pour over. Okay. So they're finding the right recipes for themselves, if you will, or the right, uh, water to coffee bean ratio that works for me. I would say if you have a standard way that you're making coffee at home, again, I make a nice hot cup of coffee and it stays hot for a while, uh, stick with your water and then, uh, proportions and then adjust your coffee weight or the amount of coffee you're using. And for me, in this particular coffee's blend, uh, about three uh, tablespoons, whether it be the Charleston Organic uh, or the uh, some of the other darker roasts, three tablespoons ish works pretty good. So anywhere from the 16 to 20 gram weight, and you're going to have a, just a huge bold flavor of coffee. But, and again, these are really, these are definitely darker roasts. So if you're a lighter roast person, you're going to probably want to grind a little bit, um, coarser. So the grains are going to be bigger, uh, and go from there and you can always adjust how much or how little coffee you put in. Is it early? And there you have it. All the coffee grinds.
So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to grab your coffee pot and you're going to want to wash your paper filter. Kind of get rid of any of the leftover things that might make it taste like paper. I started off with 28 ounces and I've used roughly one or two ounces in my washing procedure. And then once it's done, you're just going to pour it out. Get rid of all that stuff. And I'm just going to take my roughly three tablespoons worth of coffee. If you're wanting to see the uh, size of the grind, I'm going to shake it, make sure it's nice and even. And we're going to start the pour, the pour over. So um, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to wet the coffee a little bit. Make sure that it's all entirely saturated and then stop. You're going to let it sit there for about uh, 30 to 60 seconds. And this is a process you'll watch on other videos. It's called blooming. You're releasing all the CO2 and allowing all the moisture to kind of start releasing all of the oils. So just allowing that heat just to kind of sit there and high volume right there in the filter to get everything started to release. There's actually science behind that about the breakdown of elements from heat. It's just what we're doing is we're allowing it to handle itself um, without running a whole lot of water through it. It's just like everything comes out in a nice mud for lack of a better term <laughs> but you're you're uh, that 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 those coffee grinds or mud is basically got all the elements now and the oil starting to come out of it and you know and getting rid of the the other kind of bad stuff like the co2 and whatnot so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to start the pour and you can see with the nice spout i can really kind of control and start stop however i want and i kind of work in circles. So I start in the center and I'm kind of working my way out and then I'm working my way back in. Uh, what I'm trying to avoid is uh, pouring down the sides of my coffee grind and actually splashing the filter. You can do different designs. This is why I think some think it's very meditative in the morning. So when you think you're getting up too high, you want to stop, but you never want to let it completely go back down. And that's it. When you guys get done, what I would suggest is taking your you know, spoon or something like that and just kind of finishing it up. Making sure all the oils and everything else, all the yummy goodness is able to get fully released. You know, it's the agitation of the coffee beans by the pour over is what's supposed to make that work good. Not because the water is running straight down through it. It's, it's an interesting process. So you're pouring over, I think because of agitation, just as much as what you are to have the water move through the coffee grinds as well. That's really it. I mean, we have just finished up uh, doing a pour over coffee. Uh, I'm a coffee and creamer kind of guy. Uh, I know they say, well, that's just ruining it. You know, you should be tasting it black. I drink black coffee on the very rare scenario. I know what makes me the best cup of coffee. And that's the cool thing about this is that uh, this doesn't necessarily break any of that. All it does is it it helps you to dial in the right quantities of coffee to water uh, to get exactly what you're looking for. If you know that this is the best coffee for you, um, then that's probably what you're going to want to stick with. Uh, I would definitely say stay away from Walmart brand coffees. Try to support local if you can. Uh, there's a lot of other great coffees around the world too you may want to take a look at. Um, uh, for me, I like the richer, bolder bodies. Whereas if you're like my wife, she probably doesn't really care so much. You know, she's not into the bold flavor. She has to use lighter roasts. Uh, that's what tastes good to her. 
And for her using uh, a drip machine or uh, even that nasty Keurig sitting behind me works just fine for her. So anyways, I will probably be getting rid of that Keurig once and for all. I finally think I've got her convinced that the inside of that machine, after doing a lot of reading, and I was a big supporter of Keurigs, uh, but the inside of that machine, no matter how good you clean it, it gets a lot of gunk and stuff. So I'm just like, uh, and, and then to make it worse is you have all the plastic pods that you're just dumping into the environment. They do make um, refillable K-cup um, pods so you can put your own coffee into it. A couple challenges with that. Since the Curry 2.0, my experience has been that it works sometimes meaning you throw the lid down on top of the refillable canister and basically this Keurig 2.0 tells me uh, that is not a k-cup uh, go out and buy real, real k-cups and i mean it takes a lot of fiddling around with it in order to get it you know to work so that that's issue number one issue number two is cleanup which i'm not uh, too concerned with um, because i'm used to french pressing so they have to be washed out somewhere the big thing is for you guys to know is if you're using coffee grounds, do not dump them down your sink. Uh, that is a big no-no. You will clog up your sink bigger than anything. Uh, I know from experience, uh, it makes a big old hot mess. Uh, and, and that's actually one of the reasons why uh, we got this. Is part of the process of my French press, that kind of came to an end. So I would take this and wash it outside in my hose. The problem with it is... Uh, here lately, over the last uh, two to three weeks, we've actually been seeing temperatures with hard freezing, meaning the temperatures here in the Carolinas have reached about 28 degrees. That means my hose is frozen solid. So I can dump this in my trash can. I can dump it in um, like a, a plastic bag or something like that from the grocery stores, but I still end up having to come to a sink to try to get all the grounds agitated to then dump it back into my garbage can or a plastic bag and if that plastic bag has a hole or my garbage can has a hole it's going to make a big old hot mess in there so long story short <coughs> with the chemex that's all you're dealing with you just take this sale the, the filter out you throw it away wash it out no clog sinks again you are harming the environment with using paper filters uh but it's not too too bad now i will one other point about the coffee filters. If you get a coffee filter specifically for the Chemex, the filter is thicker than a number two. So if that is one thing I will probably end up trying. Uh, and for a little bit better filtering, a little bit holding of the oil, so everything just kind of keeps making it maybe even a little bit better. I don't know. Something I'm going to try, uh, and I'll report back when I've done it again. Again, this is just a an intro, non-100% technical I'm not some kind of coffee master expert in this, but this is by far the most bougie. Yeah, I said bougie coffee you can make. And I think you're going to enjoy it. I really, really do. Uh, you just have to make sure you get the right equipment. This is definitely very equipment involved. You want to be careful with cleaning your glass. You got to have the right kettle. Um, you know, too much. Uh, one, of the, one of these guys here. They work great for French press, great for cooking ramen or pho, you know, to get some hot water quick. Or I use this also to kill off the fire ants. Yep, I fill the sucker up and I boil out the fire ants. It's a great way for not putting chemicals into the ground is just killing them without putting chemicals in. Just boil them up. As you can see, it's just... I mean, you can't even see through that. I mean, that's just wonderful for me, you know? Ah, oh, this this organic Charleston roast from Charleston Coffee Roasters is great. I really, really like it. Um, and then you just pour it in and enjoy. So I hope you guys have enjoyed. Uh, I look forward to making some more. And by the way, I recorded this entire video with the GoPro Hero Max. What do you think about the colors on this? Uh, since I've been shooting this, it, it's like the Hero 9 in the sense that I can switch the cameras around to actually see myself. I can tell you that the, the, the looking at the screen, this color is by far a million times better than my 7 is. So I did some walking shots too. It's got that horizon leveling and the, the really good stabilization with it too. 
not bad. I may just dump my Hero 7 completely. I've offered it to a friend of mine uh, on the Hero 7, and that would just lock me into being using this. The, the only challenge with this is it's recording in 1080p. There's no 4K in Hero mode with this camera, which kind of sucks, because uh, I like producing in 4K and then scaling it back or even um, a higher rate frame rate. But anyways, I really enjoyed this. I hope you guys did too, and um, I'll make some more before uh, I'm back to work from home. Bye.